hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. If you remember a couple of videos back, we talked about Sutton and Bavari. And in 1902, they proposed that chromosomes are somehow linked to inheritance. That was new. Beforehand, we just had these factors. We didn't know what exactly they were. And Sutton and Bavari linked these chromosomes somehow to these factors. And they, yeah, they established there were 23 different pairs of chromosomes, 22 of these normal chromosomes, pairs, and then one pair of these sex-linked chromosomes. If you have two X chromosomes from your sex-linked chromosomes, that makes it a sex chromosome, that makes it a female, and an X and a Y chromosome, sex chromosomes, makes it a male. I'm going to talk about these sex chromosomes in this video, and we're going to talk about someone called Morgan. Because Morgan himself, he lived a bit later, so he did experiments a bit later. That was 1902, the original experiment. He did experiments about 10 years later. But he wasn't convinced that their actual theory was right. He wasn't convinced that chromosomes are important. So he tried to do an experiment to kind of prove them wrong. But by doing so, he proved them right. So Morgan actually proved that chromosomes were linked. And he did experiments with fruit flies. Go over the actual dot point. It says, describe the work of Morgan that led to the understanding of sex linkage. So we have to talk about Morgan's experiment and how that helped him to establish sex linkage and chromosomes importance. So before I start, I want to go over again quickly what Morgan's experiment actually was. He dealt with fruit flies. And his observations were as following. Generally, fruit flies have red eyes. So red eyes are the dominant one. Usually all of them have red eyes. But for whatever reason, some flies had white eyes. There was some mutation that gave them white eyes. And this was recessive. And only men, for whatever reason, only men had, or male flies had these white eyes. Remember, when it comes to normal genetics, we should always write, you know, we have the dominant one, which is R. In this case, R is, would be red, capital R would be R. And this under case would be recessive, so it would be white. And when it comes to sex linkage, we have to talk about, we have to first identify which extra chromosome is important that carries this information. In this case, it's the X chromosome. And what we do then is we actually put, in this case, X chromosome R. So this means that this chromosome carries the red gene, whereas this chromosome carries the white gene. So we don't write it in a normal Mendel way. We just write the actual chromosome that is affected, and if it has the recessive or the dominant allele on it. But in this case, we write for red. R stands for red. So capital R stands for red, and under case R stands for white. So if I say white and red, that means capital R is red, and under, under case y, R is white. So what he did, he first he crossed a white-eyed male with a red-eyed female, and these were the actual genotypes of these different ones. We said that we have to have the X representing the actual gene that's been carried. So in this case, it has the white gene, this one, and the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome has nothing on it because there's nothing, not much being carried on the Y chromosome, so there's nothing on it. Whereas the female has, in this case, two capital X's, like two capital R's, so they're both dominant. The homozygous is red. So we have one female red and one white-eyed male being crossed, and then we just do the normal endogenetics, and we get the X here from the male, which is white, and then the X here from female, which is red, and then obviously the dominant one is overshadowing the recessive one, so this is a red-eyed female. We do the same thing again, so we have this X here, which has the like undercase R, which is white, and then this X here, which is uppercase R, which is red. This, both these are females, and both of them have red eyes. Do the same thing again for here. This Now we grab the Y from the male, and take the X, uppercase X, for the female. So in this case, it's a male with red eyes. Same thing again for the next one. Y from the male, uppercase R from the female. Again, we have a red-eyed male. So at the moment, all of them have red eyes. So he would have observed every single fly having red eyes. So at the moment, it's fair enough that it's quite straightforward. Dominant one wins out. What he did then? is he crossed a red-eyed female, so he crossed maybe this one here, 
with this one here. So a red-eyed female would be this one, and he crossed with a red-eyed male, this one. So he crossed the F1 generation with each other. So he took this one, again, it was a red-eyed female. And again, these colors are just to distinguish between the different types of genders. So this white stands for male and, and red stands for female. And then the Y, and then simply the same thing for the female. It had one dominant capital R and one recessive small r. So it had one red and one white allele. Then we did the normal crossing again. And what we get is the first one has one capital R from the male and a capital R from the female. So it is dominant as it's red and it's homozygous red. The second one will have a capital R from male and small r from the female. It's heterozygous, but it's still red, even though it has this a white allele in it. Now what we do then is we have we grab the Y from the male and the X capital X capital R from the female. And this here will be a red eyed male. And then we do it again. This here from the male and a small undercase R from the female. And this one will actually be a white-eyed male. So what he established now, he actually found, okay, well, for whatever reason, we've just gotten a white-eyed male. Only men, only male can have white eyes. He established that because of his experiment, because you know, females have never had white eyes, and we now we've just gotten a three-to-one ratio, and the only one that had white eyes were the males. We didn't actually have a, we didn't have a three-to-one ratio. Um, but this just this meant that only men can have red eyes. But he did find something quite strange. His ratios were actually that 80% had red eyes overall, 80% had red eyes, and 20% had white eyes. This is what his experiment showed. If you remember the actual Mendel genetics, Mendel genetics showed it was a three to one ratio. So it should have been 75% red eyes and 25% white eyes. But the actual ratios were a bit off, and he found that only males were white, females weren't white. It was the first weird point, but what he did then is he crossed the F1 generation with each other. He took this one here, so he took a red-eyed female, sorry, yeah, he took a red-eyed female and a red-eyed and white-eyed male, so he took this one, which is your white-eyed male, and he crossed it with this one, which was your heterozygous red-eyed female, he crossed those two together. And he got a pretty interesting result. He got this happened to you. So this was the in this case this is the female here. And the female had one dominant R, so one red allele and one white allele. And the male had only a white allele for his X chromosome, and obviously that Y chromosome. And then what he did he they did the normal mixing out mixing around. What he found this time is the first one was all normal. It was it came out like a female which had red eyes. The second one was a male with red eyes. So capital R from this X and a Y from this male. That was still all good. But now what he did is he found, okay, well, this X comes from here, the small R comes from here, and the small R comes from this male. Both of them were, so this was a female, a female with white eyes. He found his first female with white eyes, even though he didn't think that was possible. And last one, which is your normal, and this one was a white-eyed male. He expected a white-eyed male, but he didn't expect a white-eyed female. So what he realized now is that there was more to chromosomes than simply your 20 normal chromosomes, but that these chromosomes were also really important, these XY chromosomes. But by doing so, he also showed that chromosomes themselves actually carry some kind of gene. Because in this case, the actual female and male chromosomes carried genes for white-eyed and, and um, red-eyed. So he realized that chromosomes are somehow related to carrying these factors. So Morgan's work helped to link between chromosomes and inheritance for the reasons established. He realized that there were actually chromosomes, these X, these X chromosomes, which did carry genetic information. He realized that through his experiment. And he also realized that sex-linked genes show different ratios to expected Mendelian ratios. So the Mendelian ratios would have been for that F1 generation would have been 3 to 1. And no overall difference between men and female, whereas his ratios were 
eighty percent, so four to one. And he realized that only for that first time, first cross, there were only men who got it. Even though females can have it, it's unlikely to, for females to have it. So all of this was new. This didn't fit men Mendel genetics. And he realized that there was actually something to do with the sex-linked chromosomes that was different to normal chromosomes. So Morgan's work was important for those two reasons. He established the link between chromosomes and inheritance. He realized there was actually something being coded for in these chromosomes. And also, he showed that the ratios were different to Mendelian ratios. And we should know for this dot point, so you should be able to kind of describe just what, what he did. You wouldn't have to go into too much detail, and you don't have to do this in every single step. But just what he did and what he found out using this experiment that he did with this flies. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.